um, I never had a clue about any of this. It was actually my birthday two weeks ago um, on the 25th, and I had I didn't expect any phone call or anything, so I kind of celebrated with I ate pizza and some birthday cake, and and then it was the next day I found out I was um, 84 and a half kilos. Um, I'm not sure what that is in pounds, but you know, I was 15 kilos out. And I got um, I got a text message from my coach, James Dillon, saying uh, there's a possible fight at welterweight on some show in China or something. I don't know. Could you make the weight? And I'm saying oh, I'm not sure. And then I get the phone call later on about the UFC at lightweight. <laughs> and I'm thinking, you know, but uh, yeah, I, I just I was always going to try and make it, and um, just so glad that you know I made it. And trained as hard as I could and now it's all it's all been worth it. How were your arms holding up after them submissions? Were you, you squeezing quite hard? Did that play on your mind when the round finished? Um, a little bit. I was kind of thinking, oh, my, my arm's a little bit heavy now, but I knew that, you know, squeezing, that would burn my arms a bit, but it was also really affecting his breathing, so I looked over at the end of the first round, you know, he was really struggling to catch his breath, so it was tiring him out as well as it was tiring, you know, my arms out, but and uh, what's the first thought that came into your mind when you secured the stoppage? I don't know, just, it was just surreal. Just couldn't believe it, the fact that, you know, I've, that's it, 1-0 and in the UFC and um, the journey continues and, yeah, it's just unbelievable. So is the next stop of the journey to get onto the Glasgow car? That's it. I've no injuries. Um, I, can't, I can't even remember getting hit, actually, but I, I probably did, but, you know, I feel absolutely fine. Um, Got a little bit of sore throat last night, and I sort of um, realised there was something going on with my throat. It's, I don't know if it's my ears, or, but I, I feel I'm sounding off the gears, and I was a bit worried that something was going to happen. I was going to have to pull out the fight, but just had a bit of a sore throat yesterday and today. But apart from that, I've no injuries at all, and um, I'm sure there's a thousands of Scotland fans wanting me on that card. What would it mean to you to obviously fight? On the very first uh, UFC event in Glasgow, to you personally, just like a dream come true, really. You know, I've just fought in the first ever pro and card as well, and um, it's just, you know, I've made. Like, I don't even know what to say. I'm lost for words a bit, but I'd love to be on that card. I've not fought in Scotland for um, a few years, and I've got quite a vocal um, fan base, and um, even when I sell sometimes. 20 tickets, you know, my, my fans are really loud and passionate and stuff, so even 15 days notice, I think I've got about 20 to 30 people come over, and so it means a lot for me, to for people to book up and spend however much money it, it would cost to come over, and now I can kind of give it back to them a bit, they can, um, and they can fight, you know, they can come and watch me locally and save a bit of money. I noticed you felt the need to apologise to the Polish fans afterwards. Could you sort of like detail what that was about? Um, I just I just know how it feels. You know, you're um, they'll all, they'll all be disappointed um, because you know it's the, you always want your hometown fighters to win. It's always a better night. If so, that was it really. Just um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Marcin was known for a particularly dangerous ground game. You made it look easy. What do you think? Uh, how hard was it on the ground? I always believed in my, my overall game anyway, but you know, he was he was a very dangerous grappler that I, like you said I kinda made it look a, a bit easy on the on the ground. He, he was quite sloppy I felt, you know, pulling guard a few times. He pulled mount, he gave me the mount and um for him being a BGJ Brown belt and leg lock specialist, I felt like my ground game was sort of on par and the last two weeks we were drilling certain things to obviously stay away to his game or the leg box and stuff but well yeah when when I was on top of him I, I heard the referee saying you know you're going to have to protect yourself to him a few times and I'm throwing oh, I'm throwing um, bombs trying to put him out and th a lot of there was a good 10 really hard shots and, and he wasn't defending himself and I, I remember looking at the ref at one point saying you know you've told him to defend himself and um, yeah, and then I, I knew the stoppage was going to happen. What do you think this means for the Dinky Ninjas fight team to have a good strong handful of guys in the UFC now? Um, for the Dinky Ninja fight team, I think it, bring, it 
gives that sort of motivation to all other other fighters. Um, we've got me, Robert, and Jojo, and you know that's that's three of us. We've still got a lot of talented fighters that you know some people might not know of. Um, my teammate that's here today, um, there's people like him, Martin Delaney, and um, Graham Turner. I can go on Alan Johnson. We've got a lot of high-level fighters that um, are kind of on the, the cusp of getting there, and I think that will give them the sort of motivation. And I think it's kind of what Ireland's doing when I was going to be a Scottish takeover, and it just so happens that the Dink and Ninja fight team is really the only fight team in Scotland with, you know, it's. Uh, top level and we're going to be seeing a lot more Dink and Ninjas in the UFC soon I think. How much help do you think that trilogy was with Kurt Warburton to have three fights against a UFC veteran? Did, did you think that aided you in transitioning into the UFC? Um, yeah, the trilogy with Warburton, you know, he'd fought in the UFC before I fought him the first time and I think I gave him a little bit too much respect the first time because I, yeah, I think the UFC thing kind of got to me a bit. He had fought in the UFC and I hadn't, hadn't really fought anybody that that had been in yet and stuff and I gave him too much respect and I thought he would be better than he was and then to, to lose a decision to then win a, a decision and then you know stop the fight it's like I've went up in style every fight and kind of got better and seen myself improve against the same person mm -hmm. so and obviously the nervousness as well you know it's always more nerve wracking about going in one one a piece or even the, the second time losing to somebody once you never want to lose to the same person twice um, so, yeah, it definitely helps. I think so. it's helped my career. Was there any nerves go walking into the arena? Obviously, it's a big arena. You've not fought in an arena that size before. Um, surprisingly, it wasn't. It was just felt like the same same as any other fight. Um, I felt, even before the fight and stuff, I felt like I was just going out and fighting cage warriors again. Um, I'm not sure if it's the whole, um, is it John Gooden? Um, yeah. The fact that he used to work for um, Cage Warriors and you know he's called a lot of my fights before and just hearing sort of his voice it felt like I was just doing the same thing over and over again and I didn't really notice there how many people was actually there it just I don't know but every fight I get nervous but I think it all you know you need those nerves and it brings you on as a fighter it's just about controlling it and um, yeah um, just thank the UFC for giving me the opportunity um, you know the, I'm lucky that um, I hope that Jason Sago obviously whatever's wrong with him that he recovers quickly but I'm glad obviously that he got <laughs> injured as well because I would never got the chance but yeah just thanks to Joe Silva and the UFC and for giving me the opportunity thanks to all my friends, family, teammates sponsors, my management all the fans, everyone just, yeah. Thanks Steve, thanks, Steve.